Hello. Good morning. My name is Norman Fong from Norman's Orchid Nursery. And can we focus on this flower here? The topic today is on the Phenonopsis gigantea. It's hybrid and culture and it's inference in the novelty Phenonopsis breeding. Okay. This is actually not the best form. Uh, it was, but this is a, a seeding from a seed from the wild uh, unimproved jungle form uh, from the Borneo of uh, Indonesia. So, but it, this, even though it's a small flower, it's not, it would never get an AOS award, but it had the really true DNA of the uh, Diploid uh, Phenonopsis gigantea. So this is not mem mem improved for the big flower, the color form, but this is as, as wild as you can get. If you ever go to, let's say, the jungle of Borneo and you see gigantea in the wild, this is the one of the, the color form from the Borneo. Okay, the gigantea got its name from the leaf. Obviously, they are wider leaf okay and this one here is actually is the first broom seeding uh i i would say that the this is first on the flower and the, the seeding is about maybe four and a half to six four and a half to five year uh give and take uh so jacket here that's why you don't see them uh very often because it takes years uh to grow them uh never buy them bare rooted if it, if it, somebody coming from overseas, they have bare rooted seeding and they just pack it up with the new moss. Uh, they are more than 50%, you are going to fail because Jacantia, even as a species growing artificially in, from seed, in the nursery, they just really hate to be traveled. I was uh, at a Tamiami show last week and then I see some Jacantia was ship in from from asia even though they, they look good but i already see sign of, of stress from coal because they, you're coming from east asia and then maybe tra traveling from uh hong kong to miami and in between they exposed to a lot of coal damage so they, uh, if you uh, be an educated buyer if you go to the show in january february if you see a jack and tia offer from overseas uh vendor Stay away from it. I would rather to wait until if they are available in the summertime from overseas, or you just can just buy it from the. Uh, there are very several nursery in America have offer. Uh, we are one of them. Uh, we offer a lot of the. We do a lot of different uh, sea strain that we grown uh, in California. And one thing about jacket buying jacket here is the root. Okay. Can you check out the root system? Okay, so and contrary to a lot of people thought, oh, Jack Fernandez Jacantia is from Indonesia. They must love heat. They must love a lot of light. Uh, no, uh, my I have been growing Jack Fernandez Jacantia for at least good 10, 15 year commercially, and I have learned a lot. Jacantia, even though they're from. Uh, Indonesia, they are actually from the mountainside or some of the island, so they're not really sea level, sea level. So they really prefer shadier. Okay, if you versus the Phenonopsis, the Emboliensis, and Bolina, uh, they actually like a lot shadier than this type. So if you have a greenhouse, uh, I will usually put them by the cool pad. Okay. So if you're going on the light, okay, don't raise your second here too close to the light bulb. Think about them just like uh, uh, less light than your banana. So you maybe you want to put it toward the edge of the a tube versus the central of the uh, under light. So if you are going by the windowsill, okay, summertime, definitely move it away, far away from the window. Okay, so they like it a little bit cooler, shadier, they do not like temperature to about uh, 90 degree. 
So if you have a temperature uh, about 90 degrees in your greenhouse, just make sure you have a lot of air movement, a lot of air movement. Uh, they actually do really good if you hand them, hand them up. Okay, or if you are in, uh, sunny is in Louisiana. Sunny, it can, uh, the lot of heat, a lot of humidity. You can also tilt it, uh, uh, you can also mount it too. But in the winter time, just right before the flower, I usually put it higher in my greenhouse so they get more light, a little bit more light before the flower. This particular one, I should put it early. Uh, I never do a Jacantia talk in January, but it just happened. Uh, so I just took on the opportunity to show this uh, Borneo form. Uh, we, I'm really excited about this, this uh, Borneo form. After this talk, I'm going to start doing some primary hybrid. There's, uh, I can remake the Fernanda Gentleman Jack is Jack and Tia and Ludemeniana. So, uh, no, I'm sorry, Jack and Tia and Tetrapolis. And I have a lot of different uh, color form of Tetrapolis, the blue one, the copper form, the bronze one. So we can remake a lot of uh, Gentleman Jack using this amazing, look at this. This is the first room, two spikes. So this is have a very good DNA, okay, from the jungle of the Borneo. And I'm very grateful that my friend from Indonesia sent me some dry seed that he collect from the Borneo on the jacket here. So this is good. We don't have to go out and to collect the wild specimen from the, the jungle. So living there, you know, uh, okay. So jacket here, and this is the alba form of the jacket here, okay. Our form is another new color form that's coming on the market. It's very exciting. I am, and when I talk to Yang Yang this summer, I'm the, the young, um, young Yang of Prince Orchid, really the forefront of the Jagantia breeding. And uh, he has some of the best Jagantia collection in the world. Okay, we talk about just any island, about five different color form, uh, different island. and. He also do a lot of breeding with the Jack and Tia Alba. This is one of his Alba. Don't worry, uh, we were go we're going to release a lot of his hybrid using the Jack and Tia Alba. Okay, this is one of the, the novelty using Jack and Tia as Alba as a pollen parent. So look at the size on this. Okay, and they are spiking. So we we're going to release this. Uh, next month, you know, I don't want to release it right now because weather is kind of cold. I don't want to get they got uh, in, in transit. So it's better to receive this in the winter time. But look at the leaf. This is gorgeous. That's how the jacket here got this name. It's just, oh, yeah, you can just. <laughs> it's a uh, jacket here, it's actually one of the species just perfect for under light. Okay, it is. Uh, Sunny will have, um, if, we, if we have a heat pad in the winter time, uh, put it on the top of heat pad. Uh, you can, they just love the heat. Uh, if you have bottom watering system in the, in the system, in your greenhouse, bottom watering is mean the, the hot tube going circulate from the bottom. So the, the heat, the roots area always stays nice and warm. It's also very good for the, not just for uh, Jack and Tia, but a lot of novelty. Okay, so I'm actually very, uh, my approach with Jack and Tia, uh, Fan and Jack and Tia right now is on the foliage. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about is hybrid later on. But my new approach right now is on the leaf. Okay. I have selected this tray of the silver leaf color form. Okay, and this is. When I was in Taiwan last month, uh, last October, and this is a hybrid made by Yang Yang. And look at the leaf on this guy. Okay, this is actually, they're very compact. They're all silver leaves. So I handpicked about maybe 30 of them, or the fun out of two, 300 print of the what we call silver leaf strand. And this is actually using the uh, Shuriana prints. Uh, Shuriana Prince is a silver leaf Shuriana with a Jack and Tia from Prince Orchid. 
And the Jack and Tia he used in this one here is a very, very dark spotted Jack and Tia, the red one, okay? Uh, we of our form. And the beauty about this, this 50-50 of the Jack and Tia, you know, 50% of the spotted, red spotted form and the 50% of the alba form. When they flower, they all had red spot. Okay, the, the spot dominant over the, the green, the alba form. But albinistic cut down the size of the foliage. For that Jack and Tia, it's about this big. And the, I saw the part of the mother print is that really cute round leaf, okay? So this tray is gonna give it to Jamie later on uh, for, for her jumper tomorrow. And so this is, uh, you don't wanna miss this one. It's just amazing. I personally love the foliage, okay? The, they are, you're gonna see different, co different form coming up. So this is the species, sh Shuriana. So this is the leaf. Okay, from on this, so you can see this. The so we pick the the best from the both species, the spot, the silver leaf from the jacket here, and and Suriana, and the compact redness from the jacket here. So uh, this is the number, Jeff. Can you give it to Jamie? She's not doing She's not doing jumper tomorrow, huh? Two more weeks. Two more weeks. Okay, sure. No, we need to leave it for her over there, okay? So this is how Jack and Tia. Uh, I'm gonna show you this. This another nice silver leaf. Okay, so this is actually Fernandez's Cinderiana. I used a, Cinder, a very nice silver leaf Cinderiana as a pop heron and onto Jack and Tia. So you can see the Jack and Tia inference on the foliage. So the new trend Actually, in Asia, right now, is a silver leaf marking on the phalaenopsis. So I'm personally actually responsible for making that silver leaf Shuriana on the map. Remember five years ago, I offered the first Shuriana, the silver leaf strength. Okay, so we actually do it ahead of, ahead of uh, a game right now. So this is the type of primary hybrid, okay. The silver leaf, the flower is not going to be full round, but they're very exotic, very similar to bronze madam. Okay, but bronze madam is Shuriana by uh, not with Jacintia, but more compact. But the, the trend now is the, the foliage. So when they are not in flower, they are very, very ornamental for you. Okay, now the important thing for the Jacin, uh, Fernandez Jacintia. On the, on the hybrid, especially the modern hybrid, is the Harlequin. So this is the Harlequin. We all know about this, Harlequin. Okay. And uh, this year's Phalaenopsis Symposium. And I'm going to do an uh, update about since the last time I offered them at the World Orchid Show in Miami. So it's, the first, the development of the Harlequin Phalaenopsis is starting when we, we have it on record in 1996. So I have seen all the development and one of the really contributing species for the Harlequin is the Phalaenopsis jacantia. Okay, and it's also started with a very important species called Golden Pioker. Okay, so this is the Golden Pioker. This is this. Okay, so you want, you do want you do not want to mix up the Fail Fanatic Symposium. I'm going to go over the development of the Harlequin, okay? Phalaenopsis. It all tie in well together with the Phalaenopsis Jacintia. And uh, I'm probably the only living person have seen all the development of the Harlequin since 1980, 1996. In fact, my first the most Fernanos, most expensive Fernanos I ever purchased was in 1996, a stamp prop of Golden Pioker, and I paid $2,500 uh, USA for it. My ex-wife almost killed me. 
okay. Anyway, but this is how it developed, okay. It, it, anyway, uh, so this is all Harlequin. The nice thing about Harlequin, I don't want to give out too much stuff. You do want to come into the Fail Symposium because it, this is very excitement on the Harlequin, especially with Jagantia. The Jagantia, even though the species get big, but it is actually recessive in breeding. It passed on to a lot of wonderful, wonderful quality. AOA judge, American Orchid Society judges love it because it is generally very nice and very you, full form. Okay, you have beautiful spot, you have beautiful substance. Even for novelty on the first prune, look at this. Nice time. Versus, remember the Bonina for Fish uh, Bonina. Malaysia, usually the first one is small. So for on the right approach by the breeder, so we can actually increase the day, the length. Okay. And so this is actually a lot of development in the we we breed it with white. We put it with this is gonna release pretty soon. I just love this. Now you have Harlequin. We the bit lip. Okay. But look at the leaf. Remember I told you about Jack and Tia? Jack and Tia is a recessive in breeding, so they never get big leaf. Okay? There are some species that Bolina, Valencia, some stringers just get a big leaf. You know? But no, they're hybrid. They are very, very, they are recessive in the print size, but they're dominant on the color, on the spotting, and the flower form, and the color. So this is very exciting. This is part of the best of the Harlequin with big lip, and it got all kind of crazy stuff going in there. I will go, go over this with you in detail in the Fair Finale Symposium. Of course, another nice quality on the Jack and Tia is the disease is, is very interesting on the hybrid. The jack, this is actually about four generation, four generation or five generation away from the species. But this is the G that we're going war. Look at how beautiful the leaf. Okay, you still can see the leaf inference structure, but they're not, they become very, very heat resistant now. Okay, and because the, the, the gene behind it, and G that we're going war, many of you have it. If you don't have this one here, you must have this in your collection. It had this, the spotting. Can you see the difference from the Jack and Tia? And this is actually brief from the Harlequin and the, from the mutation gene. And very long lasting. Even though it's a big flower, it still had a sequential quality. They never cut off the spike because they just keep booming. And look at this one. This is first boom. Tissue culture by our own company. We are very rigid about tissue culture. Uh, many of you know I have a background in uh, horticulture and plant tissue culture. Uh, we always obtain the X print from the original and then we only name it to a couple hundred print. Okay, if you need to run another one, we go back to the greenhouse and get the new stem. We never do the stem or the stem, a crong or the crong or the crong. That's when you're going to get ruined the plant. So even though the name could be GW Green War, but the source, consider where they come from. This is why uh, when you, obviously when you want to buy the, the best quality for your outfit, some people go to Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, but you know there are also some cheaper one, but they are different outlet, different uh, quality outlet. Uh, if you are a serious collector, for the same amount of the time and effort, you might as well go some something exceptional chrome to, to begin with. All right. So this is the the, the wonderful wonderful part about the Jagantia hybrid. Okay, and. The list go on and on. This is the, another wonderful hybrid. Have a Jack and Tia Harlequin background. Okay, look at the size of the flower. 
huge. Uh, this the flower count is actually not very good because we it was actually flower in the middle of the summer. This flower has been on since October. I think it started developing in the middle of the heat in August. I think that they start to flower about this September. The flower quality is really good, and we add with proper nutrient. Look at it, another flower spike coming up. And the third one. And I don't have to, even if even if this one cut off, you still have it's still going right now. So now it's very exciting. You got this Harlequin standard size. This is almost this this particular hybrid can get as big as five inches. Okay, how do you imagine that they have Jacantia, that species way in the background, but the, the flower is tremendous, lost in quality. Okay, and still on a compact leaf. Okay, uh, another very, very uh, popular in our collection. This is done by uh, a friend of mine, Mr. Gao, and it's very hard to believe. This is actually is a Harlequin, uh, something like this. Half of the parent is from Shiriana. The only way you can see the Shiriana inference is the white lip from Shiriana. So this is called a twinkle, chocolate drop. Okay, this is another very popular clone, compact leaf. Look at this. Okay, so this is half Shiriana, but also have Jagantia in the background. And Jeff, can you touch a petal and tell me how you feel? Very thick. It's that letter. Uh -huh. It's just a letter thickness. Okay. Uh, and the, that, and also if you those last a long time. Too. They do they last a long like time. They last. And you never cut them off. And this is another a fun part about the Harlequin is these are first bloom seeding, by the way. So we also offer a lot of the Harlequin hybrid in there. Okay, so this all have, can you, can you see the resemblance of the Jacantia mm -hmm. on the flower? Okay, sometimes they become dark. Uh, it can be almost black or reddish color. So uh, when you have a chance to see Harlequin, uh, uh, if my description might be say, I have Jacantia way in the background, so you know, you know why. Beautiful, again, first bloom seeding, nice and long stem. Will help about the foliage, okay? I sometimes I don't even need to spike them, okay? It's not a pendulum like this, but you can I can tell this half the species called the Dominia in the background and some of Emboreensis. So this is the fun part about some of the more modern, more complex uh, hybrid with jacket here in the background, and you can also see the, the the thickness of the flower. And this is another one of the very popular uh, Harlequin with Jack in the background. So this is actually uh, Liu Lin's Wildcat. Okay, so this have the Jack in the background, but they also have the French spotted. So now you have all this feature on there. And look at the foliage. It's very, very handsome foliage. It's, the foliage is actually very similar to GW Queen War. Very, very nice. What's the number on that one? Okay, this number hung this oh, way. Sorry, I'm sorry, the, the one there. This one here? No, the one behind it. Yeah, here? Yeah. Oh. A couple people are asking. Uh, this one, one here is RF Moon. I, I, I just grabbed it in the last minute. I'll uh, tell you what, uh, whoever doing the recap, I will. I will I will uh, go in and give you a, uh, a number. This is actually another uh, Yang Yang's uh, Prince Orchid hybrid. Okay, he actually had G. Darukin Wu as one parent. All right. Okay. So to recap, the Dragon Tea as a species. Okay, it's a wonderful species to have. Always buy them in the blooming side because it's a very very slow grower, very leathery, but don't let the species scare you because it is tremendous, tremendous valuable in breeding uh, for novelty, for Harlequin, 
for the bit lip pipe. So the list go on. And so this is all the wonderful species. If you see, the, if you like to have Gigantia, always buy at least near mature size and the lease span should be about 25 to 35 uh, lease span. It, well, they run about good uh, from $100 to uh, 125 but it's, it's worth every penny of it because it's time. The time to take for the grower to go to this size, I, we usually figure out by the time we uh, raise from flask. If we raise up about start with 100 pounds of seeding, by the time we reach to booming size like this, we probably lost about 30%, which is way out. We take out all the weak grower, the one that doesn't do well, too slow growing. So generically, they are, they are what we call the weak grower. Or sometimes they just lost uh, to the damping off because the genetic weak. So the weed also lost 30% of it. So if you buy a small, tiny one, uh, that plant could be one of the 30% is genetically weak. Okay? And uh, I think we should do a, a show and tell this week. I have, I have a few questions. Okay, sure. Yes. Yeah, question from the audience. Yeah, you talked about the requirement for um, the species as far as cooler temperature. Mm -hmm. And then you said these are a little bit, the hybrids are a little bit warmer. Yeah. Is there any difference in fertilizing from the species to the hybrids? No. And is there any difference in light requirements? No. The, the well, the, 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 the hybrid, it, the hybrid, the species itself, is like a shadier, you know, when we talk about 100%. But the hybrid, no, is just like every other fan analysis because they have been bred with a lot of uh, complicated uh, hybrid that have emboliensis in the background, Berlin in the background, uh, Ludemaniana, Venosa, all this so wonderful species. So the hybrids species. are as easy to keep as anything else. Yes. So they don't need to be afraid to buy a hybrid. No, 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 but I, I just specific mention the Jacantia as a species because a lot of people in the past, they killed the species, okay, in particular in Florida. They thought, oh yeah, in Florida, they, they, if you're in Florida, you want to go in a special extra shade. Uh, don't hang them. Die as high as your vendor. They're going to cook them, okay? You want to really load them where uh, nice and cool and moist. It's just show it because be lots of people make a mistake. It's uh, oh, they found Indonesia, they got to be warm and hot. No, they actually, if you live in uh, San Francisco, if you live in uh, Northeast New Jersey, your summertime when you move it outdoor, it's wonderful. They actually do better. Jack and Tia actually grow, the species itself grow much easier in North America because our summer, our light intensity is not as hot and as strong as Indonesia. Okay, in Indonesia, you gotta find in really almost 70% shade when they mount it on the tree. Okay, and, and but they, they, they grow in to their vegetation during the summertime when it's long day, short night, a lot of high temperature. So right now, you just kinda get, don't, you don't have the water as much, but we don't watch it a lot. Of, our final analysis this time of year anyway. So the important thing is the light, the light, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go on and, oh, before I forget, this is the two same hybrid of the, of the Harlequin. Okay, I will mention the, the hybrid from there, okay?